Hey, this is John Reed, Diginomica, joined by Brian Summer, Epic Diginomica contributor. We're usually sitting side by side at some indiscreet location, but this time we are both in our remote uh, bat caves. Brian, how you doing? Doing just fine, John. Just fine. Yeah, we are here with with a dual missions. We're going to do two separate uh, podcasts that basically we're going to rehash a a week full of barbecue and controversial, interesting ideas on the future of enterprise software, courtesy of Acumatica and then Zoho. So we're going to, we're going to do a two for, uh, are you up for it? You ready, ready to rock and roll? I'm ready. Yeah. The only bad news is folks that are listening, the ERP on TV special has expired. So you will not be able to get your, <laughs> you will not get your free GDPR after the call. Uh, but at the end of our podcast, maybe Brian can update you on an exciting new offer that combines the best of the old with some new bundled capabilities for your licensing costs in 2020. So look forward to that. But anyhow, Brian, let's start with Acumatica. You you wrote an interesting post that got a lot of attention kind of looking back on the show. And you called it Acumatica Summit 2020. Great growth comes great responsibility. And this was... Uh, their largest ever event that combines basically users and partners, but it's become more and more of a customer show every year. 2,500 attendees, a 65% increase. What motivated you this year to write this post and what were you trying to get at? Well, uh, and ap- with apologies to Voltaire and to um, uh, Spider-Man, I guess it is, uh, for that uh, paraphrasing of the title, but here's a company that's been growing and growing and growing. And I mean, remember, uh, Acumanica had some very humble roots. It started off as a bunch of folks up in Seattle who wanted to create a, um, a different version or a better version of um, Solomon. Uh, you know, it kind of, um, and I don't mean this in any derogatory way, but it was sort of like uh, a, a, it was the most down market, smallest business kind of solution of all of the Microsoft uh, counting product lines. Well, they not only did that, but they've continued to keep rounding out the product line with additional functionality and additional depth of functionality so that they've now got themselves in a position where they can move ever more up market. So what we have is a company that's been growing on just about every metric you can look at. They're growing globally. They have, my goodness, they have some very large global distributors uh, in, all over Europe. Eastern and Western Europe and Asia, Australia, and other parts of the planet. They've got uh, a growing network of resellers and others uh, so that, you know, that growth is there, product line growth is there, upmarket functionality growth is there, everything's growing. And then that begs the question, but is the company really ready for that kind of growth? I've seen this movie before. It's when companies enter into hockey stick growth. If you're just dealing with one of the dimensions of growth, like uh, we're growing geographically, well, that creates a whole bunch of problems about like, do I have all the regs and statutory requirements, all those countries in place? Do I have all the language versions, et cetera? Or if I'm growing just on sheer user count, I put stresses on your data centers and support and implementation services. But Acumatica has got growth growing, going on in multiple dimensions all at once, including the move to upmarket, and that was the impetus behind putting that piece together. Right. And, you know, it, it was interesting for me because, you know, I'm used to picking holes in companies, like even once I like, that's kind of, I see it as my job is to find out what customers are unhappy about, find out what partners are unhappy about. Uh, find some nits of my own to pick. And I have a hard time uh, coming up with, with really good ones for Acumatica right now. But on the on the growth side, I thought it was compelling when we were joined at, at lunch by uh, CEO John Roskill, and we had kind of a frank back and forth, and you and I were at the same table. And we talked about that. And, and I, th- I thought that John was really pretty open about how he speaks with, speak with his board regularly about this issue that, you know, growth is great, but this is going to be a problem they're going to go through. And, and there's a lot of different components to that. For example, talent and resources is always, obviously a big one. Um, maintaining project quality and partner quality is another one. And, and, and John had some, some good answers for us, but it was good to have a frank conversation about it, I thought. Yeah, I like... Um... 
Well, you and I have had a lot of dealings with John over the years, and he's a pretty straight shooter. Um, he's um, And he's accessible, and I like both those characteristics and software leader. Uh, on this growth point, I was I asked a very pointed question, which is, um, what are you going to do in the situation where, and this is just a hypothetical, let's say you've got an executive who's used to running, a, I don't know, a development group of 100 people, and now because you're going through hockey stick growth, you're going to need them to run a 1,000-person development team in the next six months. Do you wait for this person to grow into that role and slow down the growth of the company, or do you go find someone else to deal with it? And I've written about this kind of problem many times in my career, and I describe it as every smart leader knows what the best use by date is on every critical leader in their company. And you're always trying to bring in additional talent along the way. And John talked very frankly about that, about how he's bringing in all these new people. And uh, they all come in with ever deeper kinds of skills and bench strength than what they've had in the past. And he's going to continue to deal with that. And that's one of the things that he's having this uh, every board meeting conversation with the board of directors on that very issue. So I'm not sure John was thinking he was going to be having that conversation with us at lunch that day. But, um, you know, me, I always steer things towards um, whatever the 50,000 foot kind of issues and the board issues. And that was one I brought up. Yeah. And. I, I raised like like one of my bigger sort of questions for Acumatica is how 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 they're going to scale uh, in terms of their multiple deployment options because they do offer uh, in addition to the multi tenant SaaS option they offer an on premise option and um, I always have concerns about that because I worry about um, folks falling behind on releases and having it more difficult to upgrade. Now, granted, most of their new customers are going with the SaaS version. So it's not like they're acquiring like this large legacy install base, but uh, they, they are aware of it. And I think, I think it's an issue that they're thinking about, but it's another example of, look, I don't think this issue is going to like, like, like prevent Acumatica from, from having a successful year or two going forward at all. But it's the kind of issue you have to think about when, when you're growing in. Um, at one point, I was having a frank back and forth with an executive at Acumatica about this, and they said, well, you know, a lot of our competitors have these legacy install bases. So, you know, and, and kind of my comeback to that was, yeah, but you don't want to be one of them. And and they're like, yeah, we get that. <laughs> like, we don't want we don't want that either. That's not in our plan. We're going to have a bunch of different ways of of handling that. So, but it's just one more example of how when you have a smaller percentage of of those types of customers fine but when you grow to the extent that they're growing once you have you know 20,000 customers or what have you then or 50,000 even like what happens with when that on premise install base grows so you know there was another little side story going on uh at the event and that was the deal that they struck to acquire Jazz, J-A-A-S, uh, that's right. a Midwest uh, creator of manufacturing software. That actually, it, it was interesting that everybody in the building knew all about it and uh, it was offering congratulations to the folks from Jazz. Uh, and that was only because these two firms have been highly complementary partners with each other for a long time. Uh, but it was a big deal because it puts them squarely in the manufacturing space. There was another announcement in manufacturing around um, process manufacturing and quality management. Those were other yeah. big ads. So, uh, you know, the bottom line, I think, for your listeners on this podcast, it was a it was a really nice, great meeting, uh, user conference, very positive. And if there's a problem that you want a software vendor to have, it's are they going to be able to handle all the growth that's coming at them? That tells you, that speaks volumes as to how many other companies are adopting that kind of technology and how many other partners, resellers, integrators, implementers, whatever, are also starting to flock towards it as well. You know, in billboard terms, this one's uh, moving up the charts with a bullet, and uh, people ought to pay attention. Your thoughts, John? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
we couldn't in this podcast cover all the different news announcements. <clears throat> they they made an Omni Commerce uh, Commerce announcement with Big Commerce. Um, I thought that quality management piece in manufacturing was big, and you mentioned process manufacturing also on this year's roadmap. Um, JAS manufacturing, I think, is really interesting because it ties into Acumatica's vertical ERP plays. Acumatica is really serious about being a vertical ERP player, and and you know they had a partner build out an entire vertical on their platform, which is uh, pretty unusual in the cloud ERP market and. And, uh, and to me, that shows their commitment to their partner ecosystem, but also just like building out these verticals and construction industry is another example. I did a piece on a construction industry customer. So there's a whole lot going on with Acumatica that's interesting. One other thing I'll just briefly mention is the I, I did a piece on the uh, customer award winner power storage solutions. And they had a super interesting project that they brought home in, in, in three months, but in the process of doing their interview, they they really posed an interesting debate because they talked about how they were working with with uh, best in class components that became worse than class when they put them all together and tried to integrate them. Mm. And and I think they were speaking to the pain points a lot of customers have. But then, in my article, I got into a debate with uh, the customer um, Derek Elridge, who's one of the uh, Elridge, who's one of the founders, and we talked about you know my view that that cloud to cloud integration can be somewhat easier and that sometimes there can be a role for an additional best of breed component. I won't spoil the whole debate for folks. Now you can kind of check out the article, but to me, there's not like one really right answer to those things, but I thought it was refreshing to see those kinds of conversations happening. And, and that's the real benefit of, of a community like that is where customers are having really honest conversations around like, yeah, best of breed didn't work for me and here's why or what have you. And, and having those debates is to me that's 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 re- the reason why you get on planes and go to these shows. So that I think that's Acumatica, Brian. I think that let's let's leave it there. 